I think the honorable thing for our species to do is deny our programming. Stop reproducing. Walk hand in hand into extinction. One last midnight, brothers and sisters opting out of a raw deal. We do not trust any friends or family members. I repeat, do not trust friends. Yeah, well, I love to look at it. Anyway, we'll get there. Do you know, speaking of satanic guys, uh, this is a terrible transition. The You'll never convince me that aspartame isn't the cause of cancer. I'm the New York Times breaking news right now. Aspartame is a possible cause of cancer. A who agency says, and then sub subheading the FDA and the, uh, and the powerful beverage industry protested the new finding. And a second who group stood by its standard that the sweetener is generally safe, but no, 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 no. Whoa, 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 whoa. What, what does generally safe mean? Well, I don't know. I, I guess I'd have to read the article on that, but uh, that's, that a, sound, that's a, yeah. hor- that's a horrible turn of phrase. That's a, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of safe. Yeah, it's like kind generally. Can- it's kind of cancer causing. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think it's, it, uh, it's the it's the inverse of not, uh, 60% of the time it works every time. Uh, it's kind of like 10% of the time it's utterly catastrophic. I guess that's what generally yeah. safe means. Yeah, that's horrible. Yeah. Uh, so. um, but yeah, that doesn't surprise me at all. Um, any Actually, any really like... Um, doesn't surprise me that Teflon causes cancer and Alzheimer's. Doesn't surprise me that um, you know, microwaving plastics and eating out of them is problematic. Doesn't surprise me that aspartame is poison. Uh-huh. Um, doesn't just surprise me that artificial sweetener uh, breaks down your DNA. None of that shocks me. Also, doesn't shock me that uh, um, you know green tea has uh, restorative properties and antioxidants that rebuild dna that doesn't surprise me. you know there's a lot of things that don't surprise me green tea rebuilds dna fantastic you heard it here first guys yeah yeah yeah, uh, yeah i saw that on something yeah. <laughs> on i'm not Google. denying it I, I don't care it's no, no, no. Green tea's you know good. what you know i don't what? like green tea yeah i wish i could get into my sources but you don't want to do no, that. No, you don't want to do that. Like, how many retired generals would be as suddenly outed by the uh, your candor? We don't. Want yeah, that. this is this is exhausting to even think about. Yeah, <laughs> dangerous. The only. Too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There, there's a lot of things you can count on: death, taxes, Jim Lee's consistency. Oh, sadly, no. Mm. Uh, oh, yeah, very unfortunate. The so <laughs> yeah. Death blow. <sighs> Fuck. Okay, so you on your shelf, sir. So my that, name's James. Then your name is, oh, yeah. I'm James. Your name. Excellent. Uh, and we're the Extinction Agenda crew, and we're talking today to you about the death blow. The, um, so you think you got this on your shelf, uh, and you got death blow deluxe edition, and I really like Jim Lee's efforts in this. Um, I had fond memories of it. I thought there would be a lot more of it. So I was like, I don't know why I thought like at least the first few issues were Jim Lee. Also, I just <laughs> think that he had such a command over the first as- aesthetic look of the book mm-hmm. that it's all that anybody remembers. Like, and he did, yeah. the co- he did the covers <clears throat> all the, almost all the way through too. And then well, here's another reason nobody remembers past issue three. Um, okay. So issue it, we, we read the first six issues Written by uh, Brendan Choi, uh, <laughs> somewhat illustrated by Jim Lee, let's say, and then otherwise covered by Tim Sale uh, with some really excellent Joe Chiodo coloring. Uh, I I like the coloring on this. Uh, oh, yeah, it is very really well. <laughs> yeah, very cool. And and um, and really has a, 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 a and all, albeit there's a lot of inconsistencies throughout the book, which which actually we're, we're going to get into because. But um, yeah. the, uh, the coloring had a like a bold consistency throughout, which which keeps yeah. the tone of the book. Yeah, yeah. Which, great. So one of the reasons we don't remember past issue three because issue number one came out May 1993, issue number two came out August 1993, issue number three came out February 1994, and by then Tim Sale's been brought in to start dealing with things. I think he's also showed up in issue two i think some of the images in issue two those those can't be those are those are not jim lee unless like he just really rushed it um and then after that there's consistency april may june into 1994 uh when tim sale comes in although as you read in that extensive thing uh joe um 
Brandon Choi, sorry, is uh, really fucking really fucking up the scripts because Jim Lee has him run ragged writing everything at Wildstorm. Yeah, where did they say he was writing eleven pages a day? Oh, he's he was drawing eleven pages a day. Uh, I think. That's even worse. That's, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think that's uh, yeah. Sorry, I don't. Uh, gosh, I don't quite remember. Maybe uh, no, no, eleven pages a day. I read an interview where people was there. Was he also talking about the Buscema brothers in that? About the uh, they were challenging each other, or was I re- listening to that in an interview the other day? No, that was in the that was in the article, the little article snippet you said. Okay, that. was it? Okay, all right. Sorry, I I was listening to. Uh, I don't know. I just I distinctly hear like hear a voice enacting the story. That's weird. Anyway, the human brain is weird. So anyway, uh. What, what talk? I don't know. Death blow. T- give us the give us the blow by blow. Well, I don't know. I got the deluxe edition, which I strongly recommend. Um, it's such a nice package. <laughs> yeah. You know, if you like death blow, uh, well, even if you don't like death blow, like there's some just great cover art in this, and they've got all the variants at the back, where mm-hmm. you know Tim Sale, Brett Booth's in there, all the Jim Lee covers are in here. Um, all the, I don't know. It's very cool. And, uh, yeah, I guess Jeff Loeb also got that. Um, so it starts off with that great Jim Lee aesthetic. That's, that's mm-hmm. a, that's a, you know, Frank Miller's got a lot of balls to call that a Frank Miller knockoff. Cause he doesn't fucking draw worth shit. Um, yeah. And, and, and it's not, it, Jim Lee's far more skilled at, the look that Frank Miller was going for. Um, that's I, I'm like, I'm all bold face. Say that. I'm yeah. Yeah. That's a <laughs> challenge on it. Sure. Um, even, even Jeff Loeb said when they brought him, or sorry, excuse me, Tim sale said when they brought him in, like I'm no fucking Jim Lee verbatim. That was in your yeah. article. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, for real though, it's like even a, a guy like that, like uh, one of the greatest, you know, seriously, one of the best comic yeah. artists of our generation responsible for, for, for Hallmark uh, books um, yeah. th- that are, that are look, just go down in history, the long Halloween, um, you know, the uh, he, even he, can say definitively looking at Jim Lee's art there isn't there isn't a way to step up to that plate you know mm-hmm. um and uh yeah so I don't I don't know about that whole Frank Miller thing but but uh, there there are some little elements that that you can see that he he did like sort of maybe knock off but I'm I wouldn't call this a Sin City ripoff exactly until later when they literally directed they directed Tim Sale to knock off Sim, Sin City. And oh, and then, yeah, and then, and then they fucking point. basically wrote Sin City as soon as as soon as uh, Craig gets into the bar later mm-hmm. on after the first couple. They, they do for, like do like two tactical missions, which mm-hmm. are pretty clean and really establish a good flow for the character in the book. And then they just mm-hmm. break away, and <laughs> he just becomes Marv. Just yeah, yeah. Out of nowhere, he gets jumped by a couple bum, like a couple like black ops guys at a bar or whatever. Everybody is a black ops guy, no matter yeah. who it is. If they're after Cray, they're black ops. They're, yeah. Um. But anyway, yeah. And then they were like, they basically had fucking Nancy. They even did the like, the 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 stupid um, <laughs> like the amnesia thing, like can't Gabby, sweet Gabby can't yeah. remember and he's like remembering his wife and like having the like it was it, it was really bad it was it was an aggressive knockoff um at that point and it was and, and then it then it twisted too after that it twisted into this weird four horsemen story that i just yeah. feel i feel like the sin city knockoff would have been better <laughs> <laughs> yeah i I'm, I'm kind of inclined to agree like a character like death blow is really is basically a good Marv stand in and, and they could have carved something out. Um, like all these Vatican conspiracy things like this, this book is a, um, so I'm going to, I'm going to, I'll disagree a little bit. I think that, okay, well, Jim Lee's basic uh, commercial, uh, you know, like sometimes when people are talking about art, they'll talk about like, you know, stadium rock versus art rock or something like that. You know, Jim Lee's a stadium rock band. He's, you know, he's a Def Leppard and he's here. He's tried to do like a, a goth track or something. Uh, That's and fair. 
and yeah, and he's bore, you know, he's boring a lot of elements from Frank Miller. Like it's it's unmistakable. Oh yeah, uh, there you can see the the women in bed with the, you know, with the uh, where where like, what what country are they? This is so offensive. Yeah, well, they're in like it's it's Iraq and Kuwait. Uh, later, I think that image that you're thinking though that that's a, that's a Tim Sale. No, that's uh, early. That's what like I'm looking at the page. It's in uh, on Hoopla. It's page 23. Like neither do I. Oh, you think that's a Tim Sale? I do. Uh, it doesn't. I don't know. Like it's a little. You think like, Tim came in and like tried to hard copy Jim? I think so. Well, I think, or maybe there was layouts by Jim or whatever. But just something about the line. Like I, I don't. I and those 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 inks are way too thick. Like because Jim was inking himself in this, which is another. It looks thing. like they lost Jim. Right on that last conversation with Lynch. Yeah, yeah, more or less, and then like that. Lo- that looks where that looks like where he's done. Although uh, later on, when uh, like I do, I do think it's layouts because that kick—that's a Jim Lee kick. That that up kick that uh, you see on the next page—they're good, but I'm better, and I give them their final lesson. You know, like I, some of it. It has the kineticism of a of a Jim Lee, but then it's it like that might have been why the third issue was so delayed, um, because maybe they were trying to have um, a Tim Sale copy him. Yeah, yeah. And it, and that, okay. that that would have like super delayed the book. Yeah. Uh, but then the start the start of the next issue looks mm-hmm. like full Jim Lee. Yeah, I don't know. It's uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I, they do like this. This I think this supports my like. Some of this is like uh, sketches with pencil. Because there's no way Tim Sale did that church. Or with finishes. That church. Sorry, I gotta flip around. Oh yeah, that's straight up Jim Lee. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, like he just does come back. I take that back. You're right. Sorry, I didn't flip over far enough. Um, yeah, and like when he's like riding this bull and like cutting. Yeah, yeah. Stuff. What the fuck? Like, yeah, th- this like I don't own. What, what you own but like honestly if i ever saw it at a reasonable price i'd buy it because like well yeah, there's this, some images in here that are like for me like our image and comic history that i don't know that anyone's gonna try to replicate again mm-hmm. um i don't think it's easy and i don't think that uh i don't think a lot of people can do it <laughs> and there's the like and 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 you know as much as like poor Tim Sale got shit on or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. he, he's a one of a kind, and he's also like a high contrast master. Mm-hmm. And it, there's just no one like him either, you know. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Like I, you couldn't have asked for somebody better to, despite the stark contrast, to to take over the book. But yeah, those those first Jim Lee episodes are so cool. But so much. I don't. Did you pick up all the Predator uh, influence? Oh man, I saw. I, I felt. I felt Predator. I felt Apocalypse Now. I felt the Iraq War. I felt. Um, Hopper was uh, literally in this. Oh Hopper my goodness! Killed, <laughs> yeah, I think. I, yeah, Hopper. I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> they, uh, Hopper got skinned. Yeah, there he is. Anyway, there. In yeah. The predator, Roger in that. The predator. In the Predator, Hopper was skinned and hung from a tree. But so. Hopper yeah. and his Hopper and his boys. Yeah. Yeah, because he's even got the minigun, doesn't he? Yeah, no, no, no. He, one of them did. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, but this thing, this thing is a big hodgepodge pastiche, and and like th- those later ones, those like full page spreads. That's Jim Lee. Uh, like that. That's him. You know, he's he's fighting Frank Miller style pretty hard there, and and like the themes and imagery of of Frank Miller, but like there's so many lines. Uh, like it's almost like Barry Wrighton, Wrightson. Uh, and in some of the abstract qualities of that cross later on, like, uh, like there's some Bill Sienkiewicz, there's, this is, um, honestly, feels a little things... Barry Windsor Smith. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Like a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, and actually I think at this time he's inking Barry Windsor Smith on Deathmate Black. Uh, so I don't know if that's a connection or not, but the, um, 
I, what, what you're right. This does like this is symbolic of something. This is symbolic of a, of a moment in comics history uh, or or if nothing else, like symbolic of a moment in Jim Lee's career. And if Jim Lee is like a world historical figure in comics, which he is, um, I mean, I'm exaggerating to say world historical, but. Uh, you know, th- this is like this is a turn that he failed to make. Uh it's so emblematic that like there's like there's no room for for anything like artistic expression there's only stadium rock with jim you know even when he tries to to branch out like he's he can't stop being commercial to the to such an extent that it just gets completely sideways uh on him and yeah it's it's just like this is a path that could have been taken by another artist and i i think it would have I think it would have made the world a better place because like the Jim Lee that we get later on is, is like, when was the last time we really loved to look at Jim Lee's art? Like Batman, Frank Miller for me. Yeah. Even that's a little weak though. Like, like, like I'm with you. Like I'm always going to love, you know, don't get me wrong. I I don't know. That was, that was just like, that was a fun book. And it was, it was like a, it was a full six issues. Which I don't know why I can't remember the last time I got that. Maybe some yeah. of that like Superman work, but even the New Fifty Two stuff, he came in, it was soft, it wasn't. Well, I think I think that's it. Wasn't, it. wasn't full strength, and then yeah. since then it's just never been. Yeah, well, he's a little more cartoony. He's a little. My guy's like a so, hockey player that hit that forty million dollar net worth. He's just not. He's not gonna. He's not gonna get hurt out there. No thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> because <clears throat> even like he will try again now that I'm, I'm thinking about it he'll try like a creator owned passion project that michael faraday book where it was like this kid in some sort of fantasy land and like i think we bought the first issue and then never well one Oof. issue number two was probably a year late but then it, it just like i don't have any memory of that book like i know it existed but no, no, like yeah. good. I, I'm trying to think what, what kind of good, consistent Jim Lee. You know, maybe that Azarello Superman. That was fine too. Uh, that was a like, rip. Uh, that was a good rip roar in time. Um, yeah, I think it's. I think it's still. I think his better days were behind him still at, at that point. And yeah. I, you know, I'm happy. Wildcats. Like, oh man. Well, uh, Wildcats is contemporary. Uh, uh, contemporaneous with with this. Uh, like he's where that's another reason he's not producing very well, you know, in this book is because I think he's still trying to illustrate Wildcats. On well, he kicks it. This was a kickstart. He kickstarted this. He gets, mm-hmm. that's this is this is the like you use the word emblematic. This was emblematic. This is this book is emblematic of the image style. And it was like it was like a big dick flash cover. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe have a key artist do the first issue or, mm-hmm. or, or have your regular monthly artist do the first issue with a really long lead up so that the quality is outrageously good and then just have it taper off into nothingness and just not even be able to sell past five or six issues. And, then, and, and they had so many books like that. Yeah. Uh, and unfortunately, you know, this, this town, although I, I don't know, it had a little bit of a career. Like I think it went to, if I remember it correctly, went past like this. I think it, it went it went past it went this, but well past. Uh, I think that this Death Blow the Deluxe Edition is is all you'll want to put your feet I think, into. I would imagine so. By the time it gets to issue number twenty nine, yeah, diminishing returns are like yeah, it's like a dried up. It's like risking syphilis therapy. by that point. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we were going the same direction there. Well, that's yeah. Interesting. yeah. yeah. Mm. That's gross and weird. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just like the rest of that, that <laughs> would have been. <laughs> so what's uh, what's your favorite bit about this? We've sort of talked about the art or whatever, but there, there, there's something resembling a story that's happening here. Um. Well, honestly, the <laughs> the first tactical mission's so good, like Rambo, you know, like he's in the mm-hmm. boat. You know, he's 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 got he's ditching his disguise and he goes in and he handles everybody and he's and he's off the grid. The Lynch background story is happening and he's just fucking going in to butcher that that uh, that dictator or whatever that 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 was that was key for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but then later on, I like the um, 
I like the the activating gen factor to be honest with you in his cancer. Right. The doctors are trying to hide it, which is very weird. Like you're hiding this from a guy that's like obviously like he's their literal deadliest assassin, and he's and he and he's already had a mission that was botched. Uh, mm-hmm. Where he's unhinged, you've reined him back in after an absolute fucking bloodbath and in international scene, um, and, and then you're just gonna let him like flounder around in the background thinking he's dying. Like that, that's not that's not good management. I think I, you know, I, I you could put that as the motto for IO for international operations. Like, <laughs> what the what the fuck are they doing all the time? Like, anytime you go on out on a mission, like it's like. Cray slash death blow like he's like he knows that they're they're like they're of course they sent another team just in case we fucked it up so there's plausible deniability and you're like what is it with craven and lynch or especially craven um craven's the head of international operations he's the head spook and like the guy never saw a mission that he just didn't want to completely fuck up uh and like and cray never fucks up literally yeah in addition to that in addition to that he's killed at least for other teams that have tried that they've sent to try to kill him to mop up you yeah. know what you're just going to try that again over and over again like why don't, why don't we send three guys that are not as good as the, the last three guys like hopper and the boys to try and kill cray again and have cray first of all cray saved a couple of them yeah on no, new and they were sent to assassinate him and clean up a mess and it's just uh, it's unbelievable. And then to have them attack him in a bar, un- unlikely for, for I don't know. I'm not sure. And I'm not, the way I'm not sure why why Cray didn't go like I, I'm still trying to figure out the plot too. Like why Cray didn't go back to IO and kill everybody, which he could have. Yeah, yeah, probably pretty easily. I'm um, fairly certain Lynch couldn't stop him at all. Well, Lynch does have the gen factor or whatever. I guess there's that. And, you know, we we didn't see any of the IO has some formidable resources at its disposal, I'm sure. But it just sends jobbers after. Yeah, Cray seems to also be like by mid book here. He's taking bullets to the chest like the Wolverine. Uh, It's true. Yeah, he gets a healing factor. Uh, Very, again, adding to the hodgepodge. Yeah, um, yeah, and it's and it's like it's yeah. <laughs> Gabby. Look at you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I so like how they, she gets they... shot up, and there's like bed sheet entrails of her all over. Oh yeah, fuck. When they attack him at the bar, what the fuck? They're carrying around like a barbed wire cattle rustling, uh, like a like a Garrett wire sort of. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's like for like a dog wrangling thing, so that yeah, they can like... keep him at a distance. Yeah, what the fuck? Like, in, well, he didn't notice. Like, no one at the bar noticed this giant pole they were carrying around with a with a barbed wire hook, or you know, or, or he's like fairly liberal too. He doesn't kill half these guys. Well, he notices them, and he's just like, I don't have time for that. You know, like, well, yeah, you do, dude. You like, they I tried know, to kill you. Yeah, everybody's making good decisions. Uh, You're the one that's gonna need an ambulance, Junior. Yeah. He's unstoppable. First of all, I that may be a sort of a plot problem is that I am not concerned for Cray's well-being at all based Even on the has... <laughs> hodgepodge of morons that he has to deal with. He, he, get, he also becomes smarter as the book goes on. He's like a fucking detective. Yeah, he's like highly intelligent and he's reciting plot to himself in his head, which I don't appreciate <laughs> later on. Well, yeah, when you just read it over and over and you're just like nothing. It it does have a soap operatic quality in the like there's nothing moving forward. Uh, but there's always subplots burning in the background. Like I, I think that that's probably um, Chris Claremont's fault. More than anyone's. I, I like when people, when, people <laughs> would, when people would mimic Chris Claremont's like Chris Claremont's stories always had plot like things were moving forward. There was always an A train moving. But what people seem to re- seem to have learned from him is like the the bad lesson of like what's exciting is the B plot. And, and so you don't really need an A plot is the, is the sense that I get here. It's like, it's like everything waiting in the wings is much more interesting than actually having something uh, occur. Uh, and yeah, that, that's a bad lesson for them to have learned from uh, Chris Claremont. I mean, we didn't notice cause we were 
14. Well, it's too yeah. much of a shit show also. Yeah. But like this bad guy also, who's responsible for that design and what are we going for? The Black Angel? Yeah. I mean, it, well, and that's OK. And speaking of another hodgepodge, like I found myself thinking of The Exorcist because they're like it, they're in Kuwait uh, and, you know, or Iraq. And that's where The Exorcist starts, uh, where like, you know, the Satan is unleashed. If I the, remember uh, the anyway. way you call it, the, you know, the. It's been a little while the spawning I, ground of, of uh, you know. All holiness or whatever, right? Yeah, I suppose so. Or like all paganness, uh, you know, the the Mesopotamian um, region, you know. Like, I, I, anyway, I, I just like Dracula. Like, well, he's an Eastern European fellow. I mean, who, you know what? Who knows where Dracula came from? Maybe he's from this Iraq. Guy, this guy is pretty rough, though. This is rough. This is a bondage guy. He's a bit Hellraiser. He's, uh, I think. That they took some Sandman out of him a bit. Oh yeah, well with all the blood, like that, that scene was actually really awesome. Uh, Tim Sale is oh with the blood going it. down into the body. Yeah, this and unrealistic then, then, amount of blood. And then his like, well, how his like face is forming with the muscles and stuff. That's yeah, pretty, yeah, pretty good, pretty memorable. Yeah, yeah. Well, but where, I just mean sorry. like later on. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to. I'm scanning over there. I'm. I'm getting there. Getting uh, takes a little while for him to show up. And the fucking Vatican conspiracies and shit. I know I already talked about that or mentioned it earlier, but I, I don't want that to fall off the table. Oh yeah, I'm looking at him here. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's pretty. It is pretty Sandman. It's pretty like um, Damien Hellstrom. It's uh, it's stupid. <laughs> it's like it's terrible. bad. Yeah, yeah it's, it's bad, and it doesn't yeah. fit the book. None of this fits the book. Vatican conspiracies the devil guy like how, how's my guy supposed to deal with this well um, counter counterpoint think of wetworks uh you know s- similar sort of premise also featuring a former member of team seven and who do they end up fighting vampires and werewolves uh yeah it's true and i and you know in in some sense i do appreciate i mean like like I mean we i like the idea of going off the grid you know because i like the idea of taking a like a like a military spec ops team or whatever like IO, mm-hmm. I, I like you know you know infiltrate some super soldier uh, uh, premises and some gen factor stuff and then and then like just cut it loose and add super duper villains you know it's fine sure yeah yeah I sort of get it but I just I'm not not sure I mean this is all poor execution we all know that Tim knows that. Well, you know the person, but the person who doesn't know it at all is Brandon Choi. Uh, I I really like. I went looking. He's around writing for, his heart out. He always was, and like I desperate to find an interview with him, uh, or or like an extensive interview. And like, if I could pick someone to do another like Chuck Watch thing on, it would be Brandon Choi, because uh, he's like he, he's so ubiquitous at this time, and he's just he's so ill-equipped for the job that's been presented to him. Like Jim Lee, for whatever reason, like, like his relationship with Scott Williams, like there's a soul bond, uh, that like a, the, a, a contract that was struck on some level where like Jim Lee would just allow this guy to unleash his id. Like he doesn't have time to think he doesn't have time to like process anything. He's just like, I can't imagine how many thousands of pages he produced for Wildstorm at this time. Um, <laughs> And I, I just can't imagine like like so much of like whatever that guy is must have been unleashed. And like if I had to guess, it's just like. Frankly, it's just movies and stuff. It's just like he doesn't have an original thought. He's not a literary figure in any respect. Like he's just this this nexus where uh, all of the culture that he's ever um, sort of. I, I want to say sucked in, you know, gets blown out, um, smashed together and just like, blah, blah. but I know I'm not being charitable at all. No, no, also, yeah. it's kind of awesome. Yeah, well, it, exactly. There, there, yeah, is something, just, uh, there is something awesome about this. Like, yeah, yeah. Top to bottom, like it like, like, I don't know, man, if you want to check out a reality, you got to come to Deathblow. 
and yet you're you know, I, I don't know you guess okay fine <laughs> none of this is none of this is real but i was just like you know he's gonna be dealing with cancer uh like there, i don't know like kinda, there's, i know you mean there's no original ideas in here but there's so many ideas mashed together that yeah. it's just actually like a like a like a burning live thing madness yeah 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 and then with with really great art uh and so you're like you kind of want to love it even though like it really repelled me like as i was reading it should yeah yeah it's hard to read it's so hard to read (laughs) there's like so i was a there's a few points where i was like oh no i gotta find the part where i just like kind of took a pause and i was like fuck off oh when he was in the window there's a window there's a million ways to die in new york city Looking down at the traffic on Times Square, I could see death lurking around each corner, waiting for the next victim. Trust me, I know. And I was just like, oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's, I know that's when they were in the full Sin City mode. Yeah. They were yeah, even stealing the little, the lightning bolt things. And yeah. I don't know if it was like getting like Frankenstein-ish. Like, I don't know. There's so many mishmashes of, of like, of like stolen ideas and weird things happening it's it's just you can't even keep up um and and it's not like not in a good way it's not hard to read like there's no subtext <laughs> there's no yeah like that like yeah you're right i mean like i i maybe there like if we stuck around long enough but I, again i think the choy factor is at play here and you're right you know like there's nothing there's nothing below the hood there's only hood uh, and there's like a like a phoenix painted on that hood and it fucking looks <laughs> <awful>. <laughs> yeah i love that <laughs> um well the grifter man comes in at some point at the end oh that. shit yeah i mean actually I'm, oh there's when, a backlash and everything when they do a flashback um to like the the origin of the um the sword of heaven or whatever like he he brings that text to like uh, to that rothschild dude <laughs> henry rothschild like again not a coincidence that he chose the word rothschild in this conspiracy laden book like where these order of the templars or whatever uh are it also indiana jones in the last crusade which has also come out at roughly this time if i remember correctly uh you know you could just go on and on but anyway tim says uh, starts knocking off a bit of uh um, like, like um, McFarland sort of at the end of this. Uh, oh, you mean you're looking at the oh, like? Yeah, the yeah, like way, way end. Like, like I'm, I must be at issue like ten or twelve here. 10. Right, right. Hmm. Well, I was comment- commenting on something that I think is in maybe issue five, maybe issue six, when they're recounting the history of the Brotherhood. Right. And, uh, the, you know, again, coloring, fantastic. Like, it really gives it that old-timey... Yeah, yeah, that... Is uh, it another universe, that tapestry type shit? He, he, it's almost, um, you know, you know what I, you know what wasn't out at this point, I don't think. Uh, well, maybe mm. it was, but it's, it's very Assassin's Creed for me, too. Oh, definitely, definitely not out at this point. Um, I don't think so. Does Assassin's Creed really, like, that old? That's, it can't be. That's a post-2000 thing, for sure. Oh, yeah, 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 maybe. Uh... But the same materials. Yeah, exactly the same sort of uh, conspiracy uh, fantasy ideas are at play in, in all of that, like the Knights Templar. And like it, it that that stuff had such currency in the 80s and 90s. Uh, and it's so it's not a surprise to see it included in, in all of this, you know, whether it whether it serves the character of Michael Cray in any respect. Like, who is Michael Cray? Uh, you know, not to be too fucking pedantic, but like, who is this guy? I it's like I, awesome. Yeah, well, that's it. Like he's like I don't. He has an interiority, sort of, but like, but no. And you're right. Like he changes his qualities over the course of the thing. Like he's kind of a he's he's kind of a Charlie or Martin Sheen kind of character early on, uh, and then. Uh, yeah, and then later it becomes like you know Marlowe or or something like that. Yeah, so it's just, yeah, and then he, at one point he's like fucking Matlock. Yeah, like, it's pretty weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and then he's Marv also the entire time, 
and so yeah like I, I i think that's another thing that repelled me about this is because like i've got no latch on to the to the character well, yeah uh, and he's missing he's missing um he's missing a fluid aesthetic also like jim gave him a, an aesthetic like jim gave him a look like we knew the fucking big moosey that we were dealing yeah. with you know and then yeah. tim sale would sort of like uh he would just like he would have he would take him up and down a little bit, you know, and 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 you didn't really have a like a look that, that like the fucking bandanas, his face always looked different, his facial hair always looked different, his weight always looked different. Um, you know, it was it's <laughs> it was just really patched together. Yeah, and whoever has the you know when they gave it over to Tim Sale to alter, you know, they were like go go full Frank Miller, and he sure you're right scanning through it again i'm like oh yeah my goodness really went full frank miller um, oh yeah he didn't he didn't hold back they told him to do what he and and he thought he was under the impression that they had frank miller's blessing yeah yeah i, I was surprised um, to yeah and 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 he and he was upset that frank just didn't reach out to him personally and say hey man cut that out yeah yeah yeah, it turned into like a, a thing I shared with you, that image from uh, a Sin City book where Marv is stomping on uh, Deathblow uh, in in the bar. And I'm like, OK, you know, that's cute. That's a nice little Easter egg for those in the know. Yeah, um, that is cool. Uh, yeah, but it, like he's so determined. I, maybe this is this is the value of the question. Um of, you know, who is Michael Cray? Like, he's so determined by the art style that he's depicted in that, you, you know, you can't say the same thing about, like, I don't know, like, fuck, even Blue Beetle has more of a fucking character than Deathblow does. Uh, you know, Booster Gold has more consistency because anybody can draw him and everybody knows what Booster Gold is or what Blue Beetle is. Um, but something about Michael Cray as, uh, as Deathblow, as a character, is... You know, he's a vehicle for, uh, not a vehicle for, but I mean, like, yeah, he's just really determined by the art style. And so when you got Jim Lee drawing him, all of a sudden it's just going to be full on paramilitary. And then with Tim Sale, it's going to it's going to sw- switch completely. And then, you know, who who knows what happens after this? Um, and we'll never know. Actually, well, we no, will, I, we I, I would think to, that I would. Th- Do they lose Tim Sale after this? I'm not sure. Well, at some point, I'm assuming that they would have because uh, Tim's on his way to being a superstar. He's not there yet, to my knowledge. Like he did Long Halloween prior to this, uh, which I was like, holy shit, that was like from 1991 or something like that. Like it was, it was yeah, much earlier the, than I thought. What's the other was. big Batman book that he did? Um, Well, he did Dark Victory after that. Yeah, the Dark uh, Victory. Yeah, that one. I got that uh, recently. Oh yeah, there's oh my goodness. Yeah, you're right. Things get really intense. <laughs> I like the Jim Lee sticks with the covers at least. Yeah, I mean that's cool. I love that. I love the cover where he's behind the nun. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> uh, fucking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's what like when they're shooting the guns. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the four yeah, horsemen actually arrive at some point too. Oh, well, there we go. So there's death. Yeah. Jesus. And war? Wow, okay. Well, this is really taking a fucking ludicrous turn. That's when he needs the boys from Team 7 and shit yeah, to and the, do a tire fire. Oh, wow. Yeah, flipping through here. So, so anyway... Uh, he needs Dane comment, if you're going to do that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there we go. He stabs him right through the chest. Da, da, da. And some like, like reborn Jesus kid takes the sword and angels show up. That's a, a lot. Yeah. Uh, I, what, what else? What other movie came out at this time that would have like the prophecy is the prophecy? Oh God, I don't know. With, well, that's 1995. Uh, so that that's this predates the prophecy. But I think I think it's of a piece. Like it's it's tapped into the. I'm fuck it. Here I go again. Just using another Hegelian term, the zeitgeist. Um, it's. Yeah, it's it, like not not in any profound way, like in in all those sort of superficial ways that we've described. But, um, you yeah, know, it's uh, so I don't know. Deathblow, uh, worth owning, not worth 
anything more than that, you know? It's kind of, kind oh, of like, man, you, it's, you, it's really, like, it's really just great. Mm. Um, art it's a coffee table. Would you say it's a coffee table book? Almost, a yeah. Book? I would say, like, I, I really feel that way. Like, it may, it, this is, like, something you can, like, can break out and be like, check this out, you know? Yeah. Just like for for like a for like a non fan almost, and just be like, just just give that a flip through, you know. Treat yourself. Oh, it's almost like an yeah. art. I, I consider it almost like an art book more than more than like you know, um, must read or anything like that. But but yeah, I, I just yeah. I don't know. I I I like Deathblow. I like Team Seven. I like Image Origins and. Jim Lee and Tim Sale and just what a what a fucking fun shit show. Yeah, you definitely well, you certainly get that. Um, and yeah, I guess if you like that, and if you're listening to us, you must like that because. <laughs> 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 so I don't know. I just feel like we're just talking into a mirror so often. Yeah. Now, all we need is a little energon and a lot of luck. 